So something a little bit different on the bench today. I've got a uh, directional antenna here that uh, works at uh, around uh, 3.5 gigahertz so it's kind of in the middle of what I normally talk about and uh, this was actually used by a uh, telecommunications company back in the mid 1990s and uh, it was a completely wireless system in direct competition to BT at the time. Now they were offering considerably cheaper telephone calls using this system because they didn't have to pay to have all the uh, wires and cables put in place and uh, basically this was uh, on top of your house at uh, the uh, toppest part of the roof normally the chimney and this would actually talk to a base station normally about three kilometers away now at the time the company uh, did really well it was uh, initially valued at its peak at uh, something like 300 million pounds but uh, in less than 18 months it actually went into liquidation now what they did they did uh, site surveys if you rang them up and you wanted their service and they'd uh, come out and they had a uh, a van with a telescopic antenna built into it and it would uh, actually raise an an uh, antenna up outside your house and it would check uh, for the uh, signal back at the base station and if it was good they would actually sell you this system and an installer would come along and uh, place one of these on your roof and uh, all would be fine but uh, the problem is what they actually did they did most of their site surveys in the uh, autumn and winter months here in the UK when uh, the uh, trees are completely bare and there's no foliage and uh, what actually happened is by the time spring and summer came along and all the foliage grow, grew back again that uh, actually ended up blocking a lot of these antennas from communicating with the base station and the other nail in the coffin for uh, Ionica as well was uh, the fact that uh, the internet was becoming mainstream back then as well and people wanted data um, not just uh, voice down their telephone lines anymore and this system just couldn't cope with that so i'm not sure how much uh, these actually cost to get manufactured but uh, i would uh, believe they're not cheap i mean it is quite a light unit now i've actually removed the uh, bracket there and as i said there's some electronics in here as well to demodulate the signal down and here's the connection to the uh, actual wires that will go down into the house and then into your uh, telephone but uh, it's got this uh, plastic shield around here with these uh, four phillips screws so i'm gonna have to remove those and then uh, around the lip there there's some more screws around there so we should be able to get into this and it'll be interesting to see if I can actually modify this to uh, actually use it as a uh, antenna for uh, Wi-Fi I'm not sure if I can and it's not in too bad a condition considering it has been um, subject to the uh, British weather for the last 20 years it's uh, in uh, rather good condition I have given it a clean to get rid of uh, a lot of the grime but the plastics are uh, still looking good so these uh, must have been extremely expensive pieces of kit to have made so a little bit more than just gentle persuasion I had to uh, drill two of the screws out they uh, actually got seized in there with 20 years of uh, British weather attacking them but uh, it's not too dirty inside there yeah I'm going to give this a clean up but uh, this feels like a uh, kind of a magnesium alloy it's very very light so looking at the antenna then we've just got the uh, Phillips screws around this flange here hopefully they won't be as difficult to actually remove but uh, I'm not sure about this being magnesium now some of the paint is actually coming away here but we've got some kind of uh, white residue there where it's actually corroding so I don't know if that's what uh, magnesium does over time I don't know but uh, it is a very very light alloy though and I also noticed on that plastic flange there was an arrow pointing uh, upwards for the orientation of this antenna so I'm presuming it's either horizontal or uh, vertical uh, polarization it won't definitely won't be uh, circular polarization so these little Phillips screws are actually coming out a lot easier but again we've got some of that um, 
white powdered corrosion there coming off this so Nortel are a uh, big player in the world with making uh, antennas like this so uh, I don't know whether there's any spec sheets I've had a quick look but uh, it'd be interesting to find out what the uh, operating lifetime of this antenna is actually supposed to be what they uh, actually had on the data sheet at the time but uh, like I've said I've had a quick look but I can't find anything so now that I've got the lid off, what we've actually got here is one big giant patch antenna and underneath these uh, little rectangle indentations in the metal here I'm guessing that we're going to have to see some traces and some uh, little funky connections joining all these up as uh, one big array if you like. And also around the sides here we've got some foam waterproofing, there's no uh, kind of RF grounding going off on there on that seal there, it's just waterproof foam but it has started to actually fail and you can see some little rust spots on uh, this part of the metal here so we've got the uh, actual corrosion going off inside here and this rust so there has moisture has actually got into this antenna so be interesting to find out uh, the uh, lifespan that uh, Nortel actually give one of these but I, I, I would imagine it would be no more than 10 years especially in uh, weather conditions like the UK so for 20 years it's not done too bad but uh, it is starting to fail so it's just being held on by that connector and I don't want to just go and rip it out so I'm trying to tease it all out in one go it seems to be layered foam so once we remove the foam off there that was just being used as a uh, dielectric spacer if you like but uh, we've got 12 individual little patch antennas all connected up to uh, the uh, little connector here that makes contact underneath there with that uh, PCB board so a really nice simple design and these little patch antennas the construction is uh, very similar to what you uh, actually find on the uh, membrane of a keyboard that kind of plastic there with the uh, copper interlaid in between the uh, two plastic uh, sheets so a really really nice construction and it's all soldered on there to that one point so if I uh, had have pulled it up too hard I would have ripped it from its uh, actual connection there but uh, what I actually want to do is uh, connect to this and connect it to the alpha card and see how it actually performs at uh, 2.4 gigahertz because remember that patch antennas are quite broadband so it should work quite well on uh, 2.4 gigahertz but uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see how powerful it is and on the back of the reflector here these indentations the uh, base of these indentations will be the exact distance away to make the most efficient way of this uh, actual driven element here for uh, the propagation of the uh, RF frequency so it would have been really mapped out on a computer and uh, that distance there will be precise as uh, the uh, optimal distance that it actually needs to be so again a, a really really nice construction of a uh, multiple patch antenna array and here inside we've got this uh, little curve horseshoe type um, affair going on with a, a big solid beefy piece of copper there and uh, you've got your little connector there with your little centre pin there for the uh, actual uh, main signal line but uh, you've got these uh, little screws here and uh, they've just been tweaked to the uh, right height to make uh, contact with uh, this back reflector here so a uh, really nifty piece of uh, engineer engineering going on here I mean uh, I don't think that uh, this antenna would have been uh, particularly cheap to buy it must have cost the uh, company quite a lot of money to have this made because it's probably been made just for them as well it's probably uh, you know a one-off run and uh, I'm not sure how many homes they actually ended up uh, putting these in but they are common in the area that I live in Yorkshire 
So I've just checked on this PCB here, and we've got a date code of 1991. But uh, I'm going to remove this section first and have a look underneath here because uh, this is the microwave section and uh, it comes out here and goes into uh, this section here which will demodulate it down going into this PCB and then into the uh, connector here going down through the old copper wire so you can actually make and receive telephone calls. So underneath this PCB I'm expecting some quite elaborate tracers there to uh, actually make all that microwave magic work. So here's a uh, close up look at the uh, microwave section of this board and uh, I'm no expert when it comes to microwave electronics but it really is a uh, work of art. So to put it in simple terms what we've got here is a trace but instead of carrying electricity what it's actually carrying is uh, microwave RF signals and all these uh, little shapes here are uh, in place to maintain that signal and uh, maintain the impedance of that signal so it really is an art form to actually uh, design this sort of thing and uh, you know the only economic way to actually do it is uh, computers before computers came along somebody actually sat down and uh, designed little uh, circuits like this and they would actually spend years probably designing something like this but now with uh, computers it's uh, a lot quicker but uh, there's still a hell of a lot of work actually goes into it and that's why microwave test equipment is uh, still so expensive even second hand on ebay so some things that i do know about this board is these uh, little uh, white blocks here and there's another two over here are actually uh, microwave rf mixers and these uh, are quite expensive and you can still buy them today so I'll probably desolder these and save them for uh, possibly a future project. So this uh, chip here is a phase modulator and you can buy that as well, you can still buy that today. And uh, these two are little CMOS 8-bit uh, analog circuits and again you can buy these two chips still today so there's actually nothing on this board that is uh, unique, it's uh, constructed with off-the-shelf parts. And all these really thick traces that you can see here where the solder is being flowed are uh, actually working as uh, little gaskets to uh, section off each one of these uh, little shapes here because each one of these uh, little boards are all independent and uh, each does its own little job and then passes the uh, actual signal onto the next one so that can do its own little job so even though uh, you know it's beyond me this and I don't really understand you know the uh, finer workings of microwave electronics it really is a work of art and i think uh, of that side of it you can actually view something like this and appreciate the amount of work that actually goes into designing something like this even uh, something so simple so there's not uh, a great deal else to see with this antenna but uh, what i thought i'd do is uh, remove the rest of these electronics and connect up some coax up to the uh, panel antenna here connect it up to the alpha card and see how powerful this actually is it may turn out to be uh, you know a nice little tool for me to have uh, here in the workshop and uh, you know it could turn out to be quite a powerful little antenna because uh, it is actually quite light when you take all the uh, brackets off and everything else so you know it could be useful so what I've decided to do then is actually have the alpha card inside the housing itself and the USB cable coming out of the uh, hole in the housing there and to uh, mount some coax to the uh, panel antenna here I'm going to use some semi-rigid coax strip it back like so and put the uh, actual centre connector in that hole that's already there and just solder around the uh, actual outer braid of that coax directly to the uh, outer connector which is grounded down to the uh, back panel here so that should work out really well just cut this out to length put an SMA connector on and uh, route it directly into the alpha card and I did say there'd be nothing of real interest on the back of this board but uh, it just shows you how wrong I am there's the big ASIC there which uh, actually all this does all the conversions there for the actual telephone system itself so you can uh, receive and actually make calls so pretty beefy uh, ASIC there so as you can see I've just got the semi-rigid coax soldered into that point there coming out 
and then straight into the alpha card which I've just taped down onto the uh, back of the reflector and the USB cable will just go out through the hole in the uh, actual antenna housing. So uh, I'm just going to give it a uh, test to see uh, how powerful it actually is because remember this is actually tuned for 3.5 gigahertz so it's 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 not exactly made for 2.4 gigahertz but as i've said a uh, patch antenna is uh, quite broadband it will work over uh, quite a lengthy spectrum in the uh, rf frequencies there so we'll see how well it actually turns out so i'm going to do a quick test i've um, already got this uh, yagi set up for another video that i'm actually shooting at this moment in time so We'll test it against that uh, cheap Chinese Yagi I've got set up here and uh, I've got the same alpha card connected to that Yagi as I have inside the uh, flat panel antenna so what I'm going to do is uh, give a quick scan using the Yagi. I'm going to leave it in that fixed position as well I'm not going to move it around in any way so instantly we've got uh, 18 access points going on there all quite uh, healthy access points as well none of them are dead so the Yagi is not doing too bad at all. I've got it on quite a quick uh, auto refresh rate as well. So I think we can say uh, 18 we've got there. Also, I know I actually use uh, this um, Sky uh, access point here as a reference point because I know that uh, way the Yagi is set up now, that's direct line of sight to uh, that access point, which is uh, quite a distance away as well. I use it as a reference when I'm just testing antennas quickly here in the lab. So keep an eye on that one and it's at about, uh, well it's at 50%. So what I'll do is uh, disconnect this and uh, attach the uh, flat panel antenna. So again, same experiment, but this time using the flat panel. So I'll do a scan of the networks now. So, a few more than the Yagi. Quite a few more than the Yagi. So, quite a few more than the Yagi, and that uh, reference point there, the Sky one, is uh, significantly more as well. It's at 73% there. So, it does actually perform quite well as a uh, Wi Fi antenna. I'm pretty uh, impressed with that. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that video and found it uh, interesting. Like I say, I've had this for a while. I've been meaning to actually do something with it. But uh, I've also got a uh, 4 watt amplifier on its way to me. And I think this will be a really good project to actually put that amplifier inside. Because of all this uh, metal casing, it'll be uh, really good at shielding the uh, excess noise that an amplifier makes. And just directing it out of the front here where you actually want it. And uh, the uh, lesson that can be learned from this is uh, still relevant today. I'll uh, put links to the uh, Wikipedia page in the description, but uh, I'll put a uh, link to a PDF that I've got on my Google Drive, and it's from a guy called uh, John Hain, and he's done a really good um, PDF um, presentation on this company and uh, lessons that can be learned today from uh, you know that what the mistakes that this company made and uh, he does uh, mention quite a few of the things that I've already mentioned but I don't think he's mentioned uh, weather when he uh, talks about this and that's something else that uh, has to be taken into consideration if you're trying to set something like uh, this up in a place where you know you're expected to have a uh, lot of heavy rain rain can really uh, deteriorate a uh, signal around uh, this kind of frequency so again that's something else you have to uh, bear in mind so as i say i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one